Hi guys, welcome back or welcome if this is your first time here to my channel. My name is Mary, this is Books with Tofukado, where we talk about books and food every now and then. Today we are talking about the end of year book releases and the challenges to talk to you about these books in 60 seconds or less. Because for once I want to make a short video, short-ish for my standard, so Let's get to it. I Before we start, I have to say most of these end of year releases are f like mainly happening in October. I think we all know the reason. November has some, December it's like, I feel like authors forgot that December exists because there's literally like I couldn't find a good release, like a release I was excited about for December. I was like, what? Not even like some Christmas horror happening in December. So it's mostly going to be September, a lot in October and some in November. So the first one is coming out on September 12th and it's called What Kind of Mother by Clay MacLeod Chapman and it is a gothic horror book. So what is this book about? Our main character, Maddie Price, is forced to go back to her hometown because she's broke, she cannot, you know, she cannot make it. So she goes back to her hometown and she decides to make a living out of being a palm breather at the local farmer's market. It's a bit weird, Grant. I wouldn't go and say palm breeding is like the most, you know, prolific career out there, but you go, you do you go. So she does this thing and one day she reads, she palm breeds, the hand of her high school sweetheart, which he, he who is called Henry McCabe, and who sadly uh, his son has been missing for the past five years and presumed dead. But as she, you can see this coming, she's gonna read the palm of this Henry, and she's gonna see her his son, and she's gonna be haunted by visions of his missing son. So this is going to be a paranormal horror book where like I feel we're gonna get some domestic thriller stuff and some paranormal stuff where like our main character is gonna be haunted by this kid, his ghost or whatever happened to the kid. She may or may not find him alive but like I feel like that's gonna be the thing like her trying to find out what happened to the kid, being haunted by it and like just a whole shenanigan of a situation. So moderately excited about this one i do like the whole theme of going back to her hometown and choosing palm breathing as a profession and i can see where this could be fun so i'm moderately excited about this one so that's the first one the second and third one i'm gonna go quite fast because i already talked about them in my guessing the plot oh no son do not go away i started filming when there was sun uh, i talked about the next two books in my guessing the plot by, ju by just looking at the covers video, you can go check it out here, but it is Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison and Rouge by Mona Awad. Both of these are also coming out on the same day, September 12th. Black Sheep is a story about a girl who left her family when she was 18 because her family was kind of giving cold vibes and she was like, huh, ain't having this. And her family was like, if you leave, you shall never come back here. But one day, many years later, she receives an invitation to her cousin, cousin's wedding back at the family house. And she's like, hmm, suspicious. But instead of being like a logical person, she's like, why not go and see, you know, what's up with the fam? And obviously, as she gets there, weird things start to happen. And uh, she's going to have to discover the truth of her family and herself and like everything that happened during her childhood. So I know I'm saying it in a like jokingly way, but I'm pretty excited about this book because I really like Rachel Harrison's writing style. And this one feels like the most horrorish book out of all the ones that I, you know, out of all the ones that I've read from her. So yeah, I'm like pretty excited. And then Rouge by Mona Awad uh, is a story about a girl who uh, is obsessed with skincare, skin and all of these things. One day her mother dies and she has to deal with all the shit of like, you know, having a parent die. 
And while she's at the funeral, this weird lady approaches her and she's like, mm, your mom used to go to this spa that's called like La Meduse or something, like I forgot the name. And uh, she's like, hmm, that's weird. And she starts like investigating the spa. She goes to the spa and weird things start to happen. And soon she'll realize that like something's afoot and this spa is not just like any other spa. So again, very excited about this one because Mona Wad has been a, I don't know why, but like she started really bad for me. Like I read Bunny and I was like, ugh, what is this? And then I read All's Well and I was like, hmm, what is this? And then Rouge is like, hmm, yes. So I hope it's good. I know Maddie has read it. I know other people I follow have read it and they liked it. So I'm excited about it. And that cover, mm, so good. Last for September, we have a short story collection that's called Never Whistle at Night, an indigenous dark fiction anthology, which comes out on September 19th. Many indigenous people believe that one should never whistle at night. This belief takes many forms. For instance, native Hawaiians believe it summons the hukaipu, the spirits of ancient warriors. And native, native Mexicans say it calls lechuza, a witch that can transform into an owl. But what all these legends hold in common is the certainty that whistling at night can cause evil spirits evil spirits to appear even when and even follow you home. These holy original and shiver inducing tales introduce readers to ghosts, curses, hauntings, monstrous creatures, complex family legacies, desperate deeds, and chilling acts of revenge. Introduced and contextualized by best-selling author Stephen Graham Jones, these stories are a celebration of indigenous people's survival and imagination, and a glorious reveling in all the things in an ill-advised whistle might summon. I have this as an arc, so I'm currently in the midst of reading it, and it's very good so far, and honestly, like, I haven't finished it, and I feel like with any short story collection, every story is different, so you might like some and you might not like some others, but so far it's been very good, so if this is something that interests you, I highly recommend this book to you, even though I haven't finished it, but so far I read like 30% and it has been worth it, and I feel like it's gonna keep being good until the end. So September 19th, I will most likely publish my review way before that, but uh, yeah, just keep an eye on that. And those are the five books for September. As I said, most of them are in October, so let's go to October. The first one is called Knock Knock Open Wide by Neil Sharpson and comes out October 3rd. All right, so this one, I apologize in advance for all the Irish people out there, but I'm gonna botch the pronunciation of all of these names and I'm gonna say them the way I think, but I'm pretty sure they're not gonna be, like, this is not the right pronunciation. One night, Etain, Etain, <laughs> Larkin, finds a corpse in the middle of the road and she's like, hmm, what is a corpse doing here? She takes the corpse and she puts it, like, in a farm and I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is not what you should do with, like, a corpse that you find in the middle of the road, but you do you, girl, you do you. She never speaks of this thing again, and 20 years later, we follow up the story. And the story is followed by two characters, Betty Fitzpatrick, a college student, student in Dublin, and Ashley Malen, Malen, her girlfriend. So they're both, like, together. But Ashling is the daughter of our, you know, our crazy woman that like picked up the corpse in the middle of the road and she has a secret. And apparently everyone in her family is a bit unstable. And Betty is like, okay, I'm all in, but if you want me to be all in, I need to know it all. So she starts discovering the family secrets and the family dynamics of Ashling and her mom. And Ashling tells her that she believes her family is cursed and that everything that happens to her family is because of a children's TV show that everyone in Ireland has watched. But she watched it differently and she remembers it differently than everyone else. And she believes that's the reason why they are cursed. And I mean, I'm not the girlfriend of this girl, but I don't know. If someone told me this, I'd be like, bye-bye. 
see you. I'm not, this is not gonna happen between us, but that's the setting. And obviously the story is gonna be Betty discovering all these family secrets, discovering why Ashlyn believes that, you know, this is a thing and why she's cursed and why it's a children TV show. But like, there's a lot of elements that really attract me to this book and the cover is one of them the name of the book is another one and the setting and the craziness of it all is just so good so very excited september uh, october 3rd the next one i only added it because of two things one the cover and two the setting of the book if it had been somewhere else, I don't know if I would have accepted this book into my like new end of year releases. The dead, the dead take a train. I don't know how to read. The dead take the A train by Cassandra Kaw and Richard Cadry. It comes out as well on October third, and this is the story <laughs> of Julie Cruz, who's a thirty-year-old something burnt out. She's a, she's addicted to coke. And she's a magician and she lives in New York City and she's like done. She still hasn't succeeded as a magician in New York City. So she's desperate and a god, an eldritch god, catches her like please of like please let like make me big in the magic world and all of this. And the god is like sure I'll do that and you know it happens. But obviously as we've all learned gods, demons, angels no one in the supernatural world has good intention so please do not do like do not accept treats from this person like from these people like it's it's not good but she does and suddenly she will realize she will realize that what she accepted comes with a price and that her friends and probably the entire world is in danger because of her it's like girl please how desperate can you be September, october 3rd again uh, there's a lot of October 3rd releases because we have another one called Edenville by Sam Rubellin. Rubellin? What are... Oh, jeez. I'm gonna have to, like, take a pronunciation course and I'll actually learn how to read the pronunciation alphabet so I can actually pronounce the names of all these people. And I'm not saying this in a bad way. I have a complicated name and surname. I know the pain of having someone mispronounce your name, so, you know. So... Uh, Ed and Bill by Sam Rebel and also has an amazing cover. I love sunflowers, so I'm weak for them. <sighs> and it's a story of a successful author, Cam Campbell P. Marion, who, after his debut novel, has never found success again, like the first time. He's struggling, he's like desperate, and one day he receives an invitation to be a writer in residence at the Edenville College. And he's like, yes, please. So he talks to the girlfriend, and the girlfriend is like, hmm, not too sure about this because I lived nearby Edenville when I was a kid and it was a bit shady. But he's like, no, but please, this is a great opportunity. And they're like, okay, well, let's go. So they go and whoopity whoop, what happens? They arrive and weird things start to happen because the girlfriend said it and why should not, why didn't you listen to your girlfriend? So they get there, a series of bizarre, strange events escalate among Edenville and its residents and Cam and Quinn, the girlfriend, will soon find themselves in a dark and horrifying story. Who could have thought? I mean, it's a horror book, so I knew it was going to end up this way, but like, who could have thought? <laughs> the girlfriend saying, hmm, let's not go to Edenville, and the boyfriend going like, yes, let's go, I have like a good opportunity, like, you know? Anyway, very good, uh, like, it seems very good, and it's themed as a Halloween horror type of thing, so I really like those things. All right, to continue with October, we have my favorite of the bunch because the plot of this book is the most nonsensical thing I have ever read. But honestly, the moment I discovered this book, I le I just pre-ordered the book right away. I was like, I cannot wait. The moment this book is out, I want it in my hands and I want to read it right away. And it is Phantom by Helen Power. It comes out October 10th. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I'm gonna be laughing while saying the entirety of this plot, but it's just like... Insane. So, our main character, Rose, is broke. And she has an unstable and creepy ex-boyfriend. She's like, desperate. And one day, someone offers her one million dollars. And in exchange, they just want her left hand. And she's like, hmm, sure, take it take my left hand and 
she gets the amputation, she gets the money, but who could have thought? Like, there's side effects, and one of them is having phantom limb pain. And to cope with her phantom limb pain, she decides to go <laughs> on... A, she decides to go and accept an experimental drug trial, because why not mess up the situation even more? And out of a sudden, this drug trial makes her have a weird connection with her amputated hand and she finds herself being able to control her left hand, you know, the amputated one, from afar and she manages to use it to kill people. Either this book is gonna be a masterpiece and it's gonna enter my top five favorite books of all time, or it's gonna end like or it's gonna enter the bottom five books of all time. Like this is so nonsensical, it can be extremely good, but it can also be extremely bad. That's it. Alright. <laughs> the next one is Silent Key by Laurel Hightower. Comes out on October 10th as well. And this is the story of a wife who suddenly loses his hus uh, her husband and once the husband is dead she realizes that the husband she thought she knew is not the person he said he was so sh suddenly she finds herself grieving a person that was a stranger actually uh, having to deal with the grief of her daughter and also she finds herself in a paranormal situation where like supernatural beings approach her and she has to deal with all of this, but she also has to protect her daughter. So with the help of her best friend, Dimi, she's gonna have to like solve the mystery of her husband, the person she thought she knew but didn't, the mystery of why these supernat supernatural events are happening to her, and she's gonna have to do all of this while protecting her daughter. So this one seems like a convoluted story, but a convoluted story that could work, because it does have kind of like uh, some crime elements because there's the whole like mystery of the husband uh, the description kind of hints that the husband was killed or was involved in some sort of killing and the, there's the whole supernatural thingy as well with like you know ghosts maybe coming from the past uh, or even zombies or something else and there's also the whole like I'm a mom and I need to defend my daughter in the midst of all of it. So I feel like there's gonna be a lot of things, but if it's done properly, it can be really good. So, you know. Uh, what I don't get though is the cover. Like the cover doesn't really fit the description of the book, but I'm willing to try it out. So, you know. All right, the next one is a horror book as well, but it feels like a sad, depressing horror book but with that beautiful name i could not not add it to this list and the book comes out as well on october 10th a stacked date and it's called i died too but they haven't buried me yet by ross jeffrey and this is a story of a grieving dad whose daughter went missing and they never found her so they declared her dead after like many years and so this man on the anniversary death anniversary of his daughter he buries something like a totem to remember his daughter and one day during his counseling group uh you know session a stranger comes in and he goes like have you ever tried to communicate with your daughter maybe she's missing maybe she's in dead and he's like what do you mean by this and so you can imagine what unfolds and i feel like it's gonna be a very hard harsh book about grief and like what happens when you lose someone so important to you and how to deal with it in a horror like through horror perspective so you know very excited about it and the cover is very creepy as well i don't know why but i find it very creepy all right uh the next one is the last one for october and it's nestlings by nat cassidy comes out on October 31st. I still haven't read Mary, but this is a book set in New York and it's a story about two people, a couple, Anna and Reed, and they just had their first kid. Anna just gave birth, but sadly her, you know, birth didn't go as smooth 
as it could have and she became paralyzed and she's extremely depressed now and she resents her husband, her baby and <laughs> everything which is like a pretty common like reaction to be honest but in the midst of all of it they won what you know <laughs> they call the New York lottery and they just got Portman in Deptford one of Manhattan's most uh, revered buildings with beautiful vistas of Central Park and stunning architecture. There's some weird things happening, people are not super nice, people are a bit weird, they look at their baby a bit weird, but they're like, this is just like people living in your city, like New York City, like they're all weirdos, but like maybe it's not just that, like maybe there's something else and maybe like just living in New York City is not justification enough for like what these crazy people are might be doing and the reason why their baby has like needle-like holes in his body, so suspicious. So I'm very excited, the cover is a masterpiece and I feel like, I know I said before that I'm probably gonna buy Mary and this one and read them back to back, but I'm probably gonna read Mary first and then see <laughs> if I liked it and get this one, but uh, I feel like this is an author that we should all be on the lookout for and everything I've heard about this like this author has been like incredible so I'm super excited about this book. And now we move to November, the last month. So the first one is a Christmas themed book and it's part of a series but it, I feel like every book has a different story so I don't think it really matters and it's called The Cartoon... sorry, it's called Can Candy Cane Kills by Brian McCauley comes out on November 14th and this is a story about, I'm gonna read it to you because it's very short and like, you know, <laughs> when Austin's parents drag him and his little sister Fiona to a remote cottage for Christmas, he's less than thrilled about the force bonding exercise. But after learning that their holiday getaway was the site of a horrific crime, this family on the rocks will have to fight for their lives against a legendary killer. Because Candy Kane is slashing through this note with a very long naughty list. This seems like a very fun Christmas horror book. It's very short too, it's like 120 pages, so I feel like, you know, it's gonna be very good. The cover is very fun and I thought this could add some variety to the, you know, horror books that I'm talking about. And I'm not that much into Christmas like horror, so I thought why not get started this year. So, you know, fun read, why not? Let's go. Okay, the next one seems very depressing <laughs> to kind of like counterbalance, but the next one is called The Cartoon Lives, The Cartoon Life and Loves of a Stupid Man by Mark Joan, November 28th. And it's a story about an independent comic book store a guy who's called Philippe Fabrier. He has a mental illness and he's fairly reliant on his wife, the neurosurgeon Marilyn. These two characters are married and uh, they share a trauma together. Sadly, they both lost their baby, Antoine. Like one day, Philippe uh, is looking at the mirror and he sees a funny shape in the mirror that he doesn't recognize and he's like, who's that person? And at the same time, the following day, he receives a comic book stripe, uh, stripe from an anonymous uh, sender. And weirdly enough, that comic book resembles him and his life and he's like, hmm, this is very weird. And so Philip goes journey to discover what this, you know, comic book stripe really means. Uh, he starts doubting real he starts mixing reality with his imagination. His trauma really impacts everything around him, so he starts doubting his wife and like we go on this like trip with him as he discovers the truth about you know, his life and everything around him. And I feel like it's gonna be good, but very like harsh to read. But you know, I don't know. I, f I have a good feeling about this book and I hope it doesn't disappoint me. And that cover is really something. And congrats to the editor, like whoever did that cover deserves a freaking award because it's so well done. Like really bravo, like so good. And the last one, I know I I was being chronological till the end because, you know, but this one, come the next one comes out November 14th, so actually before the one I just talked about. And it's called Moss Town uh, by Caroline Hardacker. Har Hardacker? Hardacker? I don't know. Uh, and I'm going to read it to you again because it's a very short description. And just with this short description, I was hooked and I was like, sign me up. 
David is growing up in a world where something is very badly wrong, but everyone is protecting him and no one is telling him the truth. People are going missing, bodies are showing up with wings or bones in nests if you believe the rumors from the kids in school. David doesn't really know because his parents turn off the news whenever he might get a handle on what is happening around him and his older sister just doesn't seem interested in sharing. Most importantly for David, the center of his world, his grandfather is gone. Suspicious. His parents says he is dead, but why is his grandfather's backpack and jumper missing from the house? I feel like this is gonna be some sort of like government experiment type of situation. Like maybe the grandpa is like a CIA agent and like he, like everyone is hiding something from this kid. Or maybe the kid is living some sort of like Truman like show situation. I don't know, but like this book's description gave me the creeps. I don't know why. The cover doesn't really help because that moth Mm, creepy. Animals and insects in covers creep me out and uh, it just seems like a very interesting book uh, and that's the last one and judging by the timer in my camera I think I actually did it and this will be a less than 30 minutes video for me. Success! Uh, those are all the books. A lot. There's way more coming out. October is really stacked with horror book releases but honestly, I just wanted to show you and talk to you about the ones that I'm truly, genuinely very excited about that I'm, and that I'm 100% going to read by the end of the year. Let me know if any of these books are interesting to you, if you plan on reading any of them. Let me know if you have already read some of them because they are arcs, uh, what you thought of them, please. If Phantom was not good, do not tell me. I want to get the surprise by myself, but like very very excited about that one and uh yeah that's uh, that's it for today and i hope you all have an amazing spooky season which will officially start on the first of september which is which was yesterday because i think i'm publishing this on the second that's it for today guys if you liked it don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit that bell button don't forget to spread the tofu love and i'll see you guys next time for more content bye <laughs>